Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson on confusing word pairs. Now, this is a lesson where I will talk about some homophones, words that are spelled differently but sound the same. Sometimes they're even spelled the same but they have different meanings. But mostly, this will be a lesson about words I've collected over the last couple of years where people have asked me either what the difference is in how they sound uh, or in pronunciation or meaning or maybe they just get them confused with each other easily. They're words that are very similar in spelling but usually different in a little bit different in pronunciation and in usage. Um so, I will look at words for sure like can and can't. Um I'm over pronouncing it right now but that was a word pair on my list that people often have trouble understanding when they hear someone speaking English quickly. They're not sure if the person has says has said can or can't. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson about confusing word pairs. So, I'm gonna show you two words at a time and I'm going to talk about how each word is pronounced if they have different pronunciation and then I'll talk a little bit about the meaning of each. So, the first word pair we're going to look at is the word pair shade and shadow. So, obviously, these words are completely different in spelling and completely different in pronunciation but what makes this word pair confusing for people is often in your own language, you don't have two words for shade and shadow. So, in English, if you stand under a tree, you are in the shade. Sometimes when you're talking to someone and you're in the sun, you might say, let's go stand in the shade over there and you might walk and stand in the shade under a tree or beside a building. The key with the word shade is to know that you are usually in it, okay? You can be in the shade or you can go in the shade. The shade is falling on you from something large, usually like a tree. Your shadow on the other hand is made by your body or by your hands. Have you ever made um I was gonna try to do shadow puppets. Have you ever done shadow puppets? You can see there's a shadow on my shirt a little bit from the butterfly I'm trying to make but your shadow is on the ground. When a person walks along, you can see that there's a shadow beside them. Um so, again, probably the best way to remember it is this. You can stand in the shade and your body casts a shadow. Um hopefully, that helps you understand the difference. The next two word pairs are listen and hear. So, again, these are not um related in the sense of how they are spelled or their pronunciation. They're quite different words but we have listen and we have hear. Listening is something you choose to do. You can listen to some music. You can listen for the sound of your alarm clock in the morning. When you listen, you are deciding to use your ears to either hear something or wait to hear something, okay? So, sometimes in the morning, if I listen uh, really carefully, I can hear the rain. So, notice I used both words differently there. When you hear something, the sound comes to you, okay? Right now, I can hear the rain outside. Right now, I can hear the wind outside. But notice I can change it. If I decide that I like the sound that the rain makes, I can say, Jen and I might sit outside later and listen to the rain. So, there's an element in the word listen where the person is deciding to do it. You decide to listen to music. You decide to listen to the rain. Sometimes, it's nice to just listen to the sound of waves but if I was walking along the beach and then all of the sudden, the waves got really big, I could say, oh, I all all of the sudden, I heard the waves. I was able to hear the waves. Hopefully, that was a good explanation. We'll see. Um let me see here. So, the next two are suit and sweet. So, suit and sweet. They are very close in spelling. They are very different in pronunciation. So, when I go somewhere formal, I often wear a suit. Um a suit is a really nice outfit. You have a suit jacket. You have pants. You wear a nice dress shirt and a tie. 
when you go somewhere formal like a wedding, you usually will wear a suit. When you go to a hotel, you might stay in a suite. So, this is actually pronounced the same way as you know sugar is sweet. That's S-W-E-E-T. Um but a suite is a, a small room or collections a collection of rooms in a place like a hotel. So, if I wanna look good, I wear a suit. Um if I want to stay somewhere nice, I might rent a suite at a hotel. Um sometimes people even build what's called an in-law suite on their house. So, they'll add um like a small kitchen and a bathroom and a bedroom and they will have their um father their elderly father or mother live in the in-law suite. We sometimes call it a granny flat as well. So, you wanna look nice, you wear a suit. If you go somewhere, you might rent a suite. And then I see Key Park in the chat say, listen is active, hear is passive. Exactly, yes. Hearing is something that happens to you. Listening is something you choose to do. So, here's the classic one and some of you were puzzling over the thumbnail of this video because it has a picture of the desert and it has a dessert as well. This has a very subtle difference in spelling and pronunciation. So, desert has one S and dessert has two S's. Uh the desert of course is a very hot dry place with lots of sand. Um it gets very hot during the day and it can get very cold at night. I've never been to the desert. Um apparently, it's a very cool thing to see. I did fly over the desert once from uh on my way from Paris to South Africa to Johannesburg. Um there was just miles and miles of sand in the desert below us but sometimes after supper, we might have dessert. Um it's nice to have a little bit of dessert. Sometimes we'll have something called jello. I'm not sure if you've ever had that or pudding or maybe Jen will bake a pie. We'll have some dessert after we eat. This one uh made my list because it came up a couple of times during my live lessons. The difference between accept and accept. So, there is in my opinion, a slight difference in pronunciation when you have accept. So, if someone gives me a gift, I will accept the gift. I'm over pronouncing it a little bit. It does start with an A sound but if you were to hand me a gift, I would accept your gift. I would take the gift from you, okay? So, often um politicians do not accept gifts um because it's not good because they might be um people might be trying to bribe them. So, they usually don't accept gifts. But if you look at this picture, all of the circles are orange except one. So, notice I I pronounce that with a softened E sound. A little bit of an E instead of an A. So, you accept gifts. I'm over pronouncing it and everything in this picture, all the circles Um most of the circles are orange except one which is red, okay? So, accept and accept. If you accidentally pronounce these the same, I guarantee you no one will notice, okay? Um it's a very subtle difference and I wouldn't get too worried about it but for those of you who want to uh speak perfect English, certainly work on saying politicians do not accept gifts. Uh most of the circles are orange except one is red. So, there's a couple examples again for you. Let's talk a little bit about borrow and lend. This can kind of um trip people up. When something trips you up, it's an English phrase that means it it causes you confusion or you're not sure which one to use. When you borrow money, it means that you are receiving money from someone. Kids often borrow money from their parents. Sometimes people will have someone in their family who likes to borrow money all the time. It means they're always asking for money. They're always wanting money and they're always saying, hey, can you lend me some money? So, when you lend money, you are the person giving the money. When you borrow money, you are the person taking the money. Oftentimes, people will go to the bank because they want the bank to lend them money. They go to the bank because they want to borrow money from the bank. So, again, 
when you are borrowing money, you are you are the person taking the money, okay? Um when I was a kid, I borrowed money from my parents. They gave me money to pay for college but I had to pay them back later. So, they gave me money or they lent me money, past tense. So, when you lend, you are the person giving the money. When you borrow, you are the person taking the money. Um this one came up a few times and I think I talked about this in another lesson once but collar and color. So, people ask about the difference in pronunciation between collar and color. So, a collar is something a dog wears or a pet. Oftentimes, um Oscar has a collar and it gets a little bit loose and sometimes it falls off and then we can't find it on the farm. That happened once or twice when he was younger um because you don't want the collar too tight. Um so, we left it a little loose and then we had to buy another one. Um but color is just red, white, blue, purple, green, yellow. I don't know if I've said <laughs> all the colors. I think there's eight or fifteen distinct colors depending on how you define them. Um but color and collar. Notice the collar sounds a lot like the verb to call. You know, I'm going to call my brother. My dog wears a collar. And color um just has a little bit of a slight difference to the beginning of the pronunciation call. It's call. More like the verb to call which means you know sometimes we have a hundred um flower a hundred plants and three aren't doing well so we'll call them. That's it's a very unique verb. You might not know that verb but collar is something a dog wears and color is something that refers to all of the shades and tones that we see. So, this came up in a previous lesson where I talked about breath and breathe. So, breath refers to the actual air that's coming out of your mouth. They have very similar spellings. Breathe has an E on the end. Breath does not. In Canada, when it's really cold out in the winter, you can see your breath. In this picture, you can see this person's breath. It's so cold that the moisture in your breath can be vis- can be seen in the air. So, that's one of the good ways to remember the difference that in cold weather, you can see your breath. To breathe or breathe is the verb. When you breathe, it means you take air into your lungs, you inhale and then you exhale when you breathe. So, when someone is in an accident, they always check to see if the person is breathing. They want to make sure the person is breathing. They'll check their pulse to make sure their heart is beating and they might listen to see if they can hear the person breathing, okay? So, once again, breath, no E on the end and it's just pronounced breath. In the winter, you can see your breath and when you inhale and exhale, that's what we say when someone is breathing. So, to breathe means to inhale and then exhale. There, you learned three words on one slide. Good job, miss. Good job, Bob the Canadian. Um so, emigrate and immigrate are our next two. These two words to me sound very different but to some people, they can sound similar. Emigrate starts with kind of a a hard E, emigrate and immigrate starts with an I and this is how it works. I am in Canada. If I wanted to, I could emigrate, okay? So, when you emigrate, it means you leave a country. So, a lot of people when a country is not having is if a country's having a lot of political unrest or if there is war, people are eager to emigrate. They're eager to move away from that country. When you immigrate though, it means you come to a country. When someone moves to Canada from another country, we are saying that they immigrated to Canada. Um my grandparents immigrated to Canada. So, let me give you um the formal definition um of each of these. So, meaning of immigrate. So, let me make sure I'm on the right slide here. So, immigrate to leave one's own country in order to settle permanently in another. So, emigrate to leave one's own country in order to settle permanently in another. And then of course, we have immigrate. Uh, I'm clicking on the wrong slides here. 
So, formal definition of immigrate, come to live permanently in a foreign country. So, this is why oops, I went too far. Um, this is why we have the word immigrant. When you move to another country, when you arrive there, they will call you an immigrant. So, my grandparents were immigrants. They are people who moved from another country to Canada. Uh, let's see here. Principle and principle. So, here we have true homophones. These words sound exactly the same. They have slightly different spellings. A principal is someone who is in charge of a school. So, my boss is the principal of our school. He is the person who runs the show. He is the boss. He is the principal of a school. But a principle is like a concept or a truth, you know. I have certain principles I live by. I live by the principle that even though I'm not good at it, I should try to be nice to people every day. That's one of the principles that I live by. It's one of the ideas or thoughts, maybe rule that I live by but I work for my principal. When I go to work, I say hi to the principal every morning. Children in school are always worried that if they do something bad, they'll have to go to the principal's office. It's never a good idea to be a, a bad kid because you might have to go see the principal. The teacher might say, uh, you need to go to the principal's office. Uh, I, I'm tired of dealing with you. You're gonna have to talk to the principal. And then a principle is simply yeah, an idea or rule or code of conduct. Some people are very principled. They have certain principles that they live by. Um let's see here. Sensible and sensitive. This came up in a lesson a few months ago uh, on describing people. Um and I have to admit I do get these wrong in French all the time as well. But a sensible person is a practical person. A sensible person would have an umbrella with on a day when it might rain. A sensible person would wear winter boots in the middle of the winter instead of running shoes. A sensible person does logical, practical, normal things. Okay? So, they are someone who they they look at the weather forecast and they make a decision. Um based on that. They are sensible. They are practical. A sensitive person on the other hand and this can have two meanings. A sensitive person can themselves be very emotional. So, if you were a sensitive child, it might mean that you cried very easily, okay? You were very sensitive. Um if someone said something mean, you would cry. You were able to um as you went through life, you were you expressed emotions quickly, okay? You were very sensitive. But a sensitive person can also be a person who can sense other people's emotions and then feels sympathy or empathy. Sympathy is when you feel bad for someone. Empathy is when you know how they feel. So, two meanings for sensitive. A sensible person, we even have the um we even say sensible shoes. Um a sensible person wears sensible shoes. They wear the right footwear for the right weather. They buy the right vehicle. Um if you were a farmer and you bought a Ferrari, that's not very sensible. <laughs> uh if you were a farmer and you had a pickup truck, that would be very sensible. And again, a sensible person is very emotional or able to sense other people's emotions. Adverse and averse. So, adverse means not favorable, not nice. We use this word a lot when we are talking about the weather in the winter. Sometimes there are adverse weather conditions. So, notice there's just one letter difference. Averse, adverse. So, often on the news in January or February, they will say, it's going to be a slow drive to work this morning. It will be a slow commute. There is a snowstorm. There are adverse weather conditions. So, again, adverse means not favorable, not nice, not good. Averse, we almost always use this in the negative with the word not in front of it. At least I do. So, I don't smoke but when I go to an outdoor social gathering, I'm not averse to other people smoking. When you are averse to something, it means you're against it. When you're not averse to something, it means you're it doesn't bother you, okay? Um so, I'm not averse to getting gifts from students at the end of the year. 
Um but I am averse to getting gifts from students before the school year is over. What that means is that when I am done grading and the student has gotten their final grade and if they want to give me a gift a week later that's fine with me. What I'm averse to is sometimes students want to give teachers gifts before they've graded everything, before they've marked everything and that feels a little bit like bribery. So, averse means to be against and not averse means uh, to be in favor of. So, I'm not averse to students giving me gifts after I've given them their final grade for the semester. Uh aisle and aisle. So, aisle is spelt with an A at the beginning and aisle is not. They are pronounced by me exactly the same way. I'm not sure if there's any place where people speak English where they are pronounced differently but in the grocery store there are many aisles, okay? When people get married in a church, they walk down the aisle. So, an aisle is just a walkway. Aisle on the other hand is just a small island, okay? So, I'm not sure if that's an island and it has a few aisles around it but an aisle is simply a small island. Uh let's see. Just looking at the question from adverse is don't like something and don't agree. Yes. Well, no. Adverse means unfavorable, okay? So, don't get them too confused, Jake. Um you might have to listen to my explanation one more time. That might help. Um but yes, there is an aisle. There are many aisles in the grocery store. In fact, a common question in a grocery store is can you tell me what aisle the butter is in? Can you tell me what aisle the cereal is in? And they'll say, oh, it's in aisle six or aisle seven. And then if you're really rich, you might have uh you might have purchased an aisle, a small island somewhere. I don't know, maybe. I don't think any of us are doing that <laughs> anytime soon. Um loose and lose. So, when something is loose, it needs to be tightened. The nut on this bolt, maybe it's loose. So, this person has a wrench and they are going to tighten it. When you lose weight, sometimes your pants become loose. Sorry, I just used both words there. When you lose weight, sometimes your pants become loose. Um so, that's when something is not tight. Um my jeans got a little bit loose a few months ago but now they fit again. So, I think I've put weight back on. Um when you lose, it means that you don't win. If a soccer team or football team plays another football team and they don't win, we would say that they uh, they have lost. So, to lose is the opposite of to win. Um but it can also mean um like when you're talking about weight, you can lose weight. So, loose and lose. Can and can't. So, these are opposites of each other. This person can ski. This person can't ski. I'm probably over pronouncing a little bit. When we speak very quickly in English, we say things like um can you ski? Yeah, I can ski. And then can you ski? No, I can't ski. So, you see how can't that T at the end is sometimes under pronounced. We don't enunciate it very well. I can ski. I can't ski. I can ski. I can't ski. I can ski. Can you ski? I can I can ski. He can ski. She can ski. We can all ski. Can you ski? No, I can't ski. So, when I say can't, when I speak quickly and when I speak in my normal informal Bob the Canadian uh, English uh, speed and pronunciation, it's hard to hear the T. The best way to practice this is to say it yourself a lot. I can walk. I can't walk. <laughs> Sorry. I can run. I can't run. Um and then listen to try to listen actively. There's a there's a website called Youglish. I don't know if you've ever used it but Youglish is a great website because it lets you type in a word and then it will find YouTube videos and it will let you listen to a bunch of YouTube videos where someone's using that word. Um it's called Youglish. Maybe I should put that in the chat. Um so, it's called Youglish. I think I spelled it right. Youglish.com. It's a cool website. So, you can type in the word can't and then it will find like 500 YouTube videos and then it will actually be at the spot where a person is using can't in a sentence and then you can just click forward, forward, forward and listen to a bunch of it. Word and world. This is another classic word pair. This is one of the first word pairs that someone asked me about when I started teaching English online. 
Word. This is the word hello. Word. Add an L and we have world. World is a challenging word to say for people who are learning English. Word is not. It's usually fairly easy to say word. I've learned five words today. How many words have you learned? I've learned over a thousand words in English. World though has an a weird ending to it. The R L D is very challenging to pronounce. You're making two different sounds really close to each other. World. World. So, it starts with wor but it ends with world. Ld, ld. So, I'm actually saying an L and a D really close together. World. I'm not gonna say anymore. I think you know the difference in meaning between word and world but world is definitely a tricky one. Um and it's hard sometimes for people to say but sometimes it can be hard for people to understand when uh someone is speaking quickly as well. Um break and brake. So, on a car, you have brakes. When you hit the brakes, the brake lights come on at the back of your car. Sometimes, you go to the mechanic and the mechanic needs to fix your brakes. So, spelled differently, exactly the same pronunciation as brake. These people are on a brake. Sometimes, um you might have an accident and you might break your arm, okay? That means that you have to get a cast. Not a very nice thing. Um it's better uh, you're better off having to get your brakes fixed um than breaking your arm, okay? So, again, brakes are what make a vehicle stop, okay? You have to hit the brakes. B-R-A-K-E and brake is a word that has many meanings but the two main ones would be to take a break. Um after I'm done this lesson, I have to teach a class and then I'm going to take a break. Jen will come in in about two hours and we'll have a coffee break. Um and then sometimes uh things break. Sometimes your computer will break. That's never fun. I never enjoy it when my computer is broken. Um give and take. This is similar to lend and borrow. So, in this picture, the person on <laughs> I don't wanna say left or right. The person on this side of the picture is giving the person on the other side their flowers. So, the person on the far side is taking the flowers. The person on this side is giving the flowers, okay? Um so, hopefully that made some sense. I'm not sure I put the arrows in the best place when I made the pictures um but when you give something, you have it and you are handing it to someone else. When you take something, someone is handing it to you and you take it from them. Let's see here. This one um I chose different and difference because this comes up a lot in how people ask their questions when they're watching my live streams. Many of you who have been around for a while will say what is the difference between this word and this word? But some people will use the word different which is incorrect. So, if you look at this picture, I'll give you some example sentences. Um the red um what are those? Game pieces are different than the black game piece, okay? There's something different about them. So, you might ask this question, what is the difference? Okay? So, notice something is different. When you look outside, you'll notice that there are different kinds of trees. You might see two trees that are different and you might ask yourself, what is the difference? The difference is one is an evergreen tree and one has leaves that fall off every year. So, notice a subtle difference between these two. I didn't mean to use the word to define the word but if you look at this, something is different. Okay? So, you might look at two words and think something is different about this word and then you might ask what is the difference? So, when you the difference is when you define what is different between the two. Hopefully, that made some sense. Um thank you, Stool, for the super chat. Very awesome of you. Thank you very much for supporting me and the work that I do. Past and past. These are said exactly the same way. Technically, past ends in a T, a hard T and past ends in a hard D but when I am talking and I'll just talk about me, I say these exactly the same way. He passed the ball to the other player. Um he passed and then he passed to someone else and then they scored. 
in the past, I've done a lot of different types of jobs. So, the past is time that is behind me and past is the past tense of to pass. So, he passed the ball um and then in the past, people um yeah, I'm trying to think of an example sentence. In the past, life was a lot more difficult than it is now. And then here we go. Man and men. Man and men. There is one man at the store. There were many men at the store. This is one where the difference in meaning is very clear. Man is singular. Men is plural. Um when you have one single man, you say man and when there's many of them, you say men. But it can sound very similar when um an English speaker speaks very quickly. Um and so, I think you have to listen to the other words in the sentence, okay? There was a man at the store the other day. There was a man. There was a man at the store the other day. Um there were many men at the store the other day. So, notice you might have to look at the words around it and as I say them quickly, they do start to sound very similar, okay? I'm a man. My brothers and I are men. I'm a man. My brother and I are men. Man, men. Hopefully, that made some sense. (laughs) It was uh the more I say these words, the more they sound strange to me. Do you ever have that where the more you pronounce something, the stranger it sounds? That's what can happen sometimes. 